Why, hello there, Anxious Cynic back again with another Minimator tutorial. So another topic I've been getting asked about lately is how to do some lighting techniques. And uh, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily the best, but I thought I'd go ahead and cover what I do to light my scenes in my animation. So as you can see here, I've set up a scene and I got a camera and Steve is in an awesome pose, if you can call that awesome. And uh, I thought I'd just kind of go over what you get by default out of Minimator and what you can do to touch it up and some of the little issues you might run into in trying to do so. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and turn on a rendering. We're gonna go ahead and put that on there. And as you can see, we have a pretty basic looking scene here. It's not so bad. Let's go ahead and bring it up just a tad so we can see that a little bit better maybe. And I'm gonna go over here to the project properties, go to the background tab, and we have all of our settings here. So uh, just for some funsies, I'm gonna go ahead and make the uh, scene look a little bit better in my opinion by bringing the clouds in just a tad, maybe about 450. Let's uh, increase their size, maybe about 300 or something and make them a little bit thicker. Let's try maybe, what is it? Maybe we'll go 150, something like that. And uh, give us a little bit of, you know, some Pixar clouds or something there. Let's raise that up just a tad, something like that. Okay, that's neither here nor there, but I just had to do it because I wanted to make it look different. Anyway, let's get back to the lighting, which is uh, the point of this tutorial. Uh, so what we can do here, of course, is change the time of day by going up and down like so and whatnot. And that's going to be kind of a help to us, but it also depends on, you know, what time of day we want the animation to be in. Uh, but if it's kind of like here, neither here nor there, like it doesn't matter, then you can just set that up to whatever you think looks best. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it out here, get some shadows along these lines here. So it looks like the building kind of has some more depth to it, gets a little more light on Steve's face and puts the shadows behind him. So this is pretty much what I would start with uh, when I'm going to light my scene, just getting the sun in the right position and how I want to do it. You may not want it always to be on his face, but uh, that's just what we're going to go with for this example. And of course, since it is a sunlight, we don't want it to be just white. So I typically will bring up, I don't really have any particular hex value that I use. I just go up to a general yellow and I'll bring the value up ever so slightly so that we can get the desired effect from our sun, something like that, maybe. And uh, let's go ahead and save. And uh, there you go, that's kind of your basic just lighting with the sun and you could leave it at this, but honestly, to me, this is not a very good looking scene. So uh, let's go ahead and bring this down. And to note real quick, I have my settings. If you go to your settings tab and your render tab here or your render section, I have my sun buffer down to big and my point light buffer down to small. Because point lights can be pretty taxing on your system, same with spotlights, but particularly uh, point lights in my experience. So we're just gonna leave that turn down to small so that when we bring in our point lights, so that we don't overload our computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and bring in a point light. And let's see if we can go ahead and figure out where it is. Let's go ahead and bring it over here. And as you can see here on our little screen, let's see if we can bring this over and bring this up. I'm gonna turn off the thing here so that we can see that little button there will make it where it stays in the aspect ratio of the final video but you can turn that off so we'll uh, kind of bring this up like so so we can kind of see what's going on here and uh, what I want to do is just keep moving this around and getting the right look that we want something like this we want to kind of hide the shadows it's one of the issues with Minimator if you've seen some of my previous tutorials I've talked about it uh, if we go into the point light properties and you go to graphics, you have the option here to turn off cast shadows. Uh, but to my knowledge, as you can see here, the shadow does not disappear. This is actually something that you can do in Blender where you can tell a light not to cast shadows so that you can get the lighting you want without worrying about the shadows looking wonky. Apparently it's gonna rain today, so I hope that doesn't show up in the background. If you do hear it in the background, then I apologize. But anyway, moving on, uh, I'm gonna just turn that back on because it seems to be more or less inconsequential. But if you could do that, then uh, you wouldn't really have any issues. Unfortunately, since we can't have that option, then we're gonna have some issues. So let me uh, bring this down so we can see exactly what the camera is seeing. Try to bring it out uh, just a bit if I can do it right. And I'll see if I can work with this little sliver of an area here. So we're gonna try to keep an eye on what our light looks like. 
This works particularly well if you have uh, just like a still image project for an animated project. This can produce more problems because Steve will be moving around the scene and the light might have to move around with him or something. And uh, your dang old lighting and your shadows will get kind of screwy looking and whatnot. But generally what I do is just try to set it up in such a way where it's not quite as obvious that there's a second light source. And that way it looks like you kind of have a pretty well lit scene without a lot of issues. So uh, we're going to just go ahead and make sure our point light is selected here. I'm going to go to its settings. Let's go ahead and close that one. And we can also change the color here of the point light, as you may well be aware of. Uh, sometimes I'll just leave them as white, uh, but other times I may want to kind of match them up with the sun a little bit. It really depends on the kind of scene you're doing. If you're doing like a campfire or something like that, you may want a darker hue. If you watch my 3D fire and smoke tutorial, I kind of went over that. Uh, or like a torch or something, but uh, it's really up to you and what your scene calls for. In any case, what we can do is actually adjust the range settings here. As you can see there, this is uh, kind of affecting the scene a little bit differently as I change this value and we can adjust the fade size there if I bring that up and down. Uh, this is something you'll want to play with because as you can see now, we're not getting as much of the effect. You got a little bit of it there going, which helps to improve the image just a tad, at least in my opinion. But if I move this over, Let's go ahead and bring it in closer to Steve a little bit. The more narrow or smaller the value of the range is, then the little bit more we can play with this light. We can have it be a little bit closer to Steve to kind of emphasize certain aspects of the lighting that we want. Let's go ahead and move in here uh, without affecting as much of the scene, things like that. So it really depends on what kind of scene you have and how you want the lighting to be. But as you can see here, if I turn this off, this is kind of the dull image that you get. If I turn it on, you get a little bit more of a brighter image. If I bring it up, then we can brighten that up even more. And again, it's just kind of a balance of trying to get the lighting that you want and not destroying your shadows uh, and getting a bunch of wonky looking things because it can kind of look like Steve. Let me see if I can grab him and move him around. It can kind of look like he has like a flashlight or something looking at them the whole time and you really don't want that to be the case. You want the lighting to look pretty natural, generally speaking, unless you want it to be a flashlight pointing at them. Uh, but you typically want to kind of make things look pretty natural and not uh, a lot of trouble with the shadows and whatnot. So another thing that we can do, I'm not really sure how this is going to work out for us, but the scene looks kind of... Uh boring. This It's kind of flat. It doesn't look too bad up here. Uh, we could obviously, if we select our camera here, we can correct some of this by turning on depth of field so that the background is not quite as in focus. Uh, I usually turn my fade size up pretty significantly. It really depends on the scene though. Let's see if we can do about 250 and stuff that looks okay to me for now. And uh, what I may want to do though, is take this point light, I'm going to duplicate it just to make it easy on ourselves and I'm going to move it out. Let's go ahead and get out here. I'm just going to move it out somewhere out in this area here. And let's bump up the, uh, the range here. Let's try about 200, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We're going to put on that fade size, make that the way we want it to be and we're just going to kind of move it around and get the best look that we can. You're kind of maybe highlighting certain areas and casting shadows and others to kind of look like the sun isn't just one even light. So as you can see here this is out of focus but if we look closely, let's see what we can do here if I turn this off. It's a really subtle effect back there but you get this little bit of light back there that may not be exactly where we want it to be but we can just add some certain highlights and shadows to the background so that we don't just get this kind of flat boring background back there very subtle effect you can obviously have it be more of an effect you can turn down this fade size and that's a little bit more noticeable uh, it really depends you can play with this and, and kind of get different effects and make things look exactly how you want to but that's just kind of an idea of how you could do things uh, you you really just want to try to prevent the image from looking flat and not detailed so if I go ahead I'm just gonna select both of these and or I may not need to select both of them but I'm just gonna turn these off like so so here is our scene with just the basic lighting we improved the Sun position a bit and whatnot if I go ahead and undo those so this is what we started out with 
and I'm gonna hit undo that's gonna correct our Sun so that's what we get with the sunlight and then I'm going to go ahead and turn on this one so that gives us more light on Steve in the foreground and then we're gonna turn on this one and that gives us some depth to our background again I wouldn't say this is like the perfect lighting setup that I would actually use but this is the technique that I would use to kind of get some more depth to my scene and make things look a little bit better now again animating this might prove to be a little bit more complicated because you have to make sure your lights stay in positions so that it doesn't mess up the shadows and stuff that's unfortunately one of the issues you have to deal with with my animator but that's more or less what i would do so another thing that i wanted to cover in this tutorial and i think this might actually be uh something you might have more of a question about and that is how to light a dark scene like a nighttime scene so uh let's go ahead and turn these lights off real quick i'm actually gonna just go ahead and delete the second one for the environment light back there uh what i'm gonna do is turn the sunlight down we're gonna go into a night scene here and as you can see a lot of times i've seen uh, animations where this is pretty much the lighting that you get from the animation when it's a night scene. Uh, you might have a torch or a, a campfire or something that can produce light, but what if you just want the moonlight, basically? Uh, so this isn't really the most optimally lit scene, as you can tell. Uh, you can't even see anything that would be going on in this frame here. So what I'm going to do is enable our point light here. Let's go ahead and turn that on. And as you can see, we get a little bit of light here and we have that yellow tint on it just ever so slightly. But this is a nighttime scene. We want to pretend that the moon is illuminating this. That's one of the issues with my animator is that the moon doesn't actually seem to cast much light. So what we're going to do is bring this up to a cooler color and you can actually bring down the brightness by changing the color of the light here. But, uh, might do something. It really depends on how you want it to look. I'm gonna go somewhere around here maybe. This may not be the exact color that I would end up wanting to go with, but uh, let's back our camera up. So as you can see there, we do have the issue. Let me turn the depth of field off for now. Uh, we do have the issue where the light seems to be only in this one spot. So what I might would do to correct this is take the light and bring it up. Let's go ahead and kind of bring it out. I don't want it to be too harsh on the side of the, the building there. Not sure exactly how far we want to go. And I'm going to churn up the effect here. Something like maybe we'll go up to say 700 and uh, we'll work with that and see what we can get. And let's bring it out over this way. And bring it down like you do have to be careful with these shadows because you know this the moon isn't really supposed to be that bright uh so we don't want it to have a whole lot of harsh shadows and whatnot though there could be depending on the size of the moon that you're sort of imitating here but basically i would do something like this and uh, if i feel like that's too bright you can come down here like this like so bring it in even more blue however you want it to be something like that that looks sort of like a night scene and uh, to flesh this out a little bit more I might would come down here and bring in the fog a bit so if I come in something like so we want to actually bring the fog distance in let's actually uh, turn this up so we can kind of see what we're doing here with the fog just for the sake of it for now and uh, Let's go ahead. We're just, we want to have the fog be a little bit denser. You know, you might be kind of simulating a nighttime where there's, you know, more fog out due to the time of day or whatever. Let's go ahead and make that about 900. Something like that. Really depends. Let's go about 1500 and then bump this up. You really have to kind of play with it and see. Uh, it depends on the mood you want for your scene and stuff. So I'm going to come back over here and let's go ahead and drag this down. As you can see, the moon is there, so you might would want to have the light kind of in line with where the moon is. So if I bring this up and over, then chances are a moon should be... Ugh, where you at, moon? I don't know. I usually, like, when I'm doing this kind of stuff, I'll try to make so the moon is... Uh, or the light is in line with where the moon is at the time. So that's just something I typically do. It's not necessarily like something you have to do there. All right, so the moon is there. That means it should be coming over this way if when we do the lighting that I'm after, there it is. All right, so let's say the moon is gonna be 
right up there. And as you can see, that kind of lines us up a little bit with that there, you know, something like so, not too terrible. And we can get rid of that fade size or we can leave it in however you want it to be and I'll light up that scene a little bit. And uh, let's see, I feel like that's a little bit too, too harsh. Maybe something like that. Anyway, something like that. And that, that way you can actually light your scene and have things be visible and it still looks like it's nighttime. It doesn't really look like there's a, a huge light source. You know, obviously you could probably do this better if you play with it enough and make it fit your scene more ideally, but you could easily uh, create this kind of nighttime effect without losing uh, all of your scene in uh, complete darkness. So let's go ahead and try this. We'll turn that on and we can turn on our bloom if we want to. Highly recommend another thing that I see is a lot of people kind of overdo the bloom uh, in their videos. It may look cool at first or whatever, but uh, I would highly recommend you don't overdo the bloom. It's really better if you keep it subtle. Some of them I've seen are just really blown out kind of blooms and stuff and it may be fun to play with, but just my little pro tip if you want to consider it that is keep your bloom uh, pretty subdued. You don't want to overdo that too much. For a night scene like this, you may not even want any bloom because there's not a whole lot of light. Maybe if you have a campfire or something like that, you would want to use it. But for this, I'd say that doesn't look too, too terrible. So that's it, guys. Uh, that's pretty much, you know, you could do the uh, environmental light thing like I showed as well if you want to bring in some light to those back side areas. Let's go ahead and do that just real quick since I thought of it. And uh, we're going to take this one. Let's bring it down to say 300 and bring it out over here somewhere like so somewhere out here over these trees again like we have the uh the fog and all these other things going on for us but as you can see there very very slightly let me turn this up just a tad maybe about 320 whoa hang on 320 there we go uh you can actually do the same thing we were showing back there before let me bring that up where you see a little bit more detail and your image isn't quite so flat. It's really kind of difficult to see there, but that way you don't just lose everything in the darkness if you don't want it to be. You may want that to be the case. It's up to you, you know, whatever you're going for. But those are just little ways that you can introduce some more texture and depth and overall quality to your scene by just using a couple of point lights. I would highly recommend trying to stick with uh, no more than two, maybe three. I typically try to stick with one if at all possible because uh, point lights can be so intense on your computer when you're trying to animate. Of course, like I said, you can work with it with the settings turned way down and then when you're ready to render, bring up your sun to very big or gigantic. Usually you can leave the point light on like big or maybe very big at most and it'll produce pretty decent results. But just remember to turn those up when you go to render your final animation with that there button right there. So that's going to be it guys. Once again, I hope it was helpful. I hope you learned something or something and uh, maybe gave you some inspiration or some tips to try and employ in your own animations. But that's going to be it. So thanks for joining me, guys. Once again, hope it was helpful. If you like this video, feel free to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe to become a citizen today. Share it with your friends and your family and your pets. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.